Sugar cane in the Philippines The Philippines ranks 11 in sugar cane production worldwide. 422,500 hectares are allotted for sugar cane production out of 30 million hectares. The sugar cane commodity contributes 87 billion pesos for the Philippine economy. Sugar cane in the Philippines is cultivated by 62,000 farmers and 20.72 million metric tons of sugar cane produced in 2019. Sugar is the third most valuable export in the Philippines. The input sector of the sugar cane commodity. Major inputs used. The major inputs used for sugarcane production are characterized by locally produced inputs. These include sugarcane cuttings, which are high-yielding variety. Other inputs used are used to increase farm efficiency. These are fertilizers, farm machinery, labor, and soil. Other crucial inputs for successful sugarcane production are climate and access to proper irrigation. Volume utilization and price of inputs. Utilization of fertilizer has been increasing over the past few decades. Nitrogen-based and phosphate fertilizers are consumed. Major sets of fertilizers are listed below. The prices of fertilizers are Ammonium sulfate costs 622 pesos Ammonium phosphate costs 993 pesos Complete fertilizer costs 1,136 pesos and urea costs 1,121 pesos. These prices are based from the Philippine Statistics Authority on December of 2019. For the source of inputs, most of the inputs for sugarcane production are produced locally. These are the farm machineries, fertilizers, sugarcane varieties as mentioned earlier. Plant materials are purchased from the Sugar Regulatory Administration, La Granja Agricultural Research Center, and from the Philippine Sugar Research Institute Foundation, Incorporated, where 15 varieties of sugarcane can be found. These are the 15 sugarcane varieties from the Philippine Sugar Research Institute. Farm Sector Production Trends, Volume, and Prices Based on the data recorded by the Sugar Regulatory Authority in 2014, the sugar cane harvested in an area with 423,333 hectares planted in 23 provinces within 10 different regions. Western Visayas is the leading region that produces the largest number of sugar cane produced with 55% of the total sugar cane production, followed by the Northern Mindanao with 14% of the total sugar cane produced. Crop year 2007 to 2008 had the highest number of sugarcane production. On the other hand, crop year 2009 to 2010 had the lowest sugarcane production. Cultural Management Practices The goal of these practices is to maximize the yield production of the farm. Sugarcane is asexually propagated. It thrives in tropical and semi-tropical countries. That's why it is cultivated here in the Philippines. Before planting the sugar cane, the land area should be prepared. The best time for land preparation is during the dry seasons, since it has the right amount of moisture in the soil. There are good reasons why the land should be prepared. First, it produces soil of good tilt, mixed residues of the previous crop with the land, controlled weed growth in the area, acer growth of succeeding ratoon crop, and increases erosion and water holding capacity of the soil. Depth plowing. Subsoiling. Subsoiling is the process wherein the hard pan layer is broken without turning over the infertile soil on the top of the soil. The number of plowing and harrowing depends on the soil type. More plowing and harrowing is done if the soil type is heavy, like in clay and clay loam soils. Direction. Farmers are unaware that these practices may lead in reduction of the cost in the farm and may also lead to high yield production. The choice of direction depends on the slope and the shape of the field to be used. In planting sugarcane, you should select so incubate these seed pieces and furrow making, distribution and layout of seed pieces, planting materials, planting. Weed control. 
which hinder in higher yield production and reduces the quality of the produce. There are different ways in order to control weeds. You can do the cultural in which you may use cultural practices like intercropping and mulching. Next is the mechanical and manual, done to some extent through cultivation operations during healing and barring. Chemical, usage of chemicals to control weeds and the combination of manual and chemical. Combination is the most economical way in order to control these weeds. Fertilization, sugar cane is planted for a long period of time and this results to the depletion of nutrients in the soil. The farmer should know the proper amount of nutrient needed of the soil and the crop. Harvesting. Harvesting is considered as one of the most critical operations in sugarcane farming. Loss of tannage and sucrose content, the effort and capital invested from the start until it reaches the stage will be lost if harvesting is done untimely and without proper process. There are ways in determining the maturity of sugarcane. First is the bricks reading by refractometer. The sugar content or the juice quality of the upper third portion of the stalk is close enough to the lower portion. Second is the visual observation. The sugar cane has uniform yellowing of the leaves in the field. It has yellowish stalks and has shorter internodes at the upper portion. There are different techniques in harvesting sugar cane. First is cutting. Cutting the cane at the base to eliminate the waste in terms of sugar left in the field. Second is topping, topping or cutting the upper portion of the stalk, hauling or only the millable stalks are harvested, and after harvesting, the sugar cane should be milled within 48 hours after harvesting. In the picture, you can see a seed collection with the use of machineries. Planting sugar cane that may be also done with the use of machineries. Irrigation is an important aspect in crop production. In the picture, you can see a subsurface irrigation that may help in higher yield production. Fertilizer application. In the photo, you can see uh, fertigation is being done. Fertigation is a process of applying fertilizer in which the fertilizer is incorporated within the irrigation water in the drip system. Smart solution for sugarcane cultivation. Drones. During this pandemic, in Bacola, the farmers used drones in order to apply fertilizers and herbicides. These drones can be used in other farms in the long run. Smart irrigation. Smart irrigation increases the yield of sugarcane production by 25% through the use of Australia-inspired technology. It features subsurface drip lines and farrow irrigation. For the processing sector, here are the product lines or the processed products from sugar canes. First would be the sugar. White, brown, and muscovado is its most common varieties that are available in the market. Molasses is the syrup that remains after crystallization, which is separated repeatedly by the process known as centrifuge. From that, we can obtain different grades of molasses, which varies by the level of sweetness whereas the first will be the sweetest, or also known as the light-grade molasses, which are commonly used in baking and wine production. The latter grades, which are also known as low-grade and black stock molasses, are used as animal feeds and vinegar production. Pagas are fibrous residues after the extraction of juices from the sugar cane. This is commonly used for charcoal production, bioethanol, paper making, cattle feed, and disposable food container. Next, we have the manufacturers and scale operations. There are currently 28 operational sugar mills in the country, and the majority of it can be found in the Visayas region. For the volume and value of products, in the year 2017 to 2018, sugarcane production in the Philippines significantly decreased by 15.6% from 29 million metric tons, which dropped to 24 million metric tons. Moreover, the annual average value of sugarcane production was 43 million with a steady annual increase of 0.4%. Note that the centrifugal sugar is still the most important or used portion of the sugarcane industry, as shown in the graph with 97.7% of usage, whereas only 2.3% is for other uses. Now, I'm going to report about the marketing sector. 
First, let's exploit the marketing channel of sugarcane industry. The sugarcane from the sugarcane farmers will get the share from the small millers. Small millers to traders, then traders to buyers. It can also be done through sugarcane farmers to big millers, then directly to buyers for consumption. Also, from sugarcane farmers directly to traders or buyers. Next is the volume absorbed by each channel. This graph shows that 50% of the sugarcane production in the Philippines are mostly consumed for domestic use, such as food and reproduction production and many more. 10% of centrifugal sugar is exported to United States. The remaining 40% goes to the world free market. Then, the marketing strategy adapted by the producers and traders. Since sugarcane is a raw agricultural crop with its high demand and the marketing channel for sugarcane and sugar millers are similar, therefore, there is no real need to employ marketing strategies. Next is the marketing cost and margins. Based on the data released by the SRA Planning and Policy Department, specifically the cost structure computation, in crop year 2013-2014, the average cost for Kidan sugar per LKG was 1,536. After the marketing and logistic cost, which is a factor of cost structure, the average cost for raw sugar was 1,906. Lastly, the average cost for refined sugar was 2,542. Next is the price trend of the sugarcane industry. This table shows yearly prices of sugarcane in peso per LKG. A refers to US quota B for domestic and their composite price. In crop year 2012-2013, the composite price amounts to 1,280.34, lesser than domestic in the same period. In crop year 2019-2020, they are both higher than 1,400 which implies that they are both having an erratic growth over the year. Next is the demand and supply situation of the sugarcane industry. In 2019, the total supply for raw sugar is 2,392,894 metric tons and had an excess supply of 165,236.54 metric ton which was 23.78 lower than the previous crop year. While for refined sugar, they had 355,341.20 metric ton excess supply and is experienced a 54.11% increase compared to the previous crop year. Next is the projected demand and gap. The USDA claims that the sugar import will increase to balance the demand and supply in the country. According to them, the projected demand in 2028 for sugarcane and sugar in Asia is approximately 110 million metric ton and the projected supply is approximately 90 million metric ton. Lastly, export and import of the commodity. Only 1.6 metric ton was the export volume in the crop year 2019, which was about 47.7 million in value. Compared to crop pre-2017, which had an export volume of 440,732.7 metric ton, with a value of 10.2 billion. In the same year, sugar export volume was 337,681 metric ton. We are now in the support sector. There are two main institutions that support sugarcane industry, which are SRA and Filsary. These two provide support for development programs and projects. Currently, there are 11 main projects and programs for the sugar and sugarcane industry. Here are some of the programs. Next, we have the investment priorities to ensure the improvement of the industry. First, we have the block farming program, which will increase the yield and possibly suffice the domestic demand for the next crop years in the country. 
Then we have the research, development, and land extension, along with the farm mechanization program for a better quality of life for farmers. And the rest are for the well-being of the industry's human resources and scholars for the future. We also have other agro-services that supports the industry's development and access to credit. Now, we're down to our integrated analysis of the CSA, which include the SWOT summary per subsector of the sugarcane industry in the Philippines. First is the input sector. The strength of this sector is that the plant material sourced locally with the presence of cooperatives and the guiding policy of black farming. The weaknesses of this is that the majority of the sugarcane producers are small-scale farmer having average land size of 5 hectares. The opportunities is that they have different sugarcane varieties, utilization of farm mechanization and improved farm technology. And the threat is high prices of fertilizer. Next is the farm sector. Increasing hectare allotment for planting sugarcane. Western Visayas is the leading sugarcane producer and low importation of sugarcane which are the strength of this sector. The weaknesses of this farm sector is that they have the low sugarcane production and yield, low average hectare per farm and low sugarcane prices. The opportunities, smart solutions and innovations for sugarcane cultivation and encourage the planting of sugar cane. The threat is the climate change. Next sector is the processing. The strength of this sector is that they have numerous sugar mills all over the Philippines with high sugar demand. The weakness is they have low sugar exportation. The opportunities is they have different uses of sugar cane and the threats of this sector is high sugar importation. Next, marketing sector. The strength is they have well-established marketing channels of sugarcane and sugar in the Philippines. High production and logistic costs serve as the weakness of the sector. High sugar consumption of Asia, the opportunities. The threats is having sugar export focus only to the United States. And lastly, the support sector. The strength of this sector is they have numerous development projects and programs for the sugarcane and sugar industry. Also, numerous supporting institutions and clear investment priorities. The opportunities is that they have the support from sugar regulatory administration. The threats is inadequate funds and budget. For the conclusion, The sugarcane and sugar industry are organized. This is mainly due to the Sugarcane Industry Development Act of 2015 and the Sugar Regulatory Administration. They are very effective and efficient in gathering and collecting resources in order to implement projects and programs. For the sugarcane industry, there is a supply and demand imbalance. The sugarcane industry is characterized by a very high demand, which is uh, which cannot be sustained by the supply of sugarcane in the country. Hence, there is always importation of sugar into the Philippines. Low average hectare per farm. This causes low yield, low productivity, and low income for sugarcane farmers, which in turn discourages new entrants or new farmers to the industry. Similarly, lack of sugarcane farmers. This also causes low yield and low productivity for the sugarcane industry. As can be seen, most of the conclusions that are presented are interrelated and despite the organization of sugarcane and sugar industry, it can be said that there is still not enough funding and budget for the sugar regulatory administration and other supporting industries to fully help our sugarcane farmers and boost the sugarcane industry and sugar industry. As for the recommendations, increased land area allotment for sugarcane production. This recommendation solves the low productivity and low yield for sugarcane production, 
which one of the reasons is the low average hectare performed. Uh, increasing land area allotment will definitely increase productivity yield and income of sugarcane farmers, which in turn uh, boosts the sugarcane and sugar industry. Implementation of projects and programs. Since there are already a lot of projects and programs being implemented by the Sugar Regulatory Administration, the group recommends that more projects and programs should be implemented to increase efficiency and effectivity brought about by the supporting institutions. Philippine government support. Definitely, the Philippine government support is crucial in order to solve most of the problems for the sugarcane and sugar industry, wherein they should implement more laws supporting the farmers and sugar millers, also limit importation of sugar and allow sugarcane farmers and sugar millers to supply the domestic demand for sugar and sugarcane. Lastly, smart solutions for sugarcane cultivation. In the farm sector, it was discussed that smart solutions for sugarcane cultivation are drone technology and smart irrigation. Uh, drone technology is being implemented already in uh, Bacolod, Philippines, and uh, smart irrigation is already being implemented in Florida Blanca, Pampanga. Uh, since both of them are already proven to increase yield and productivity of sugarcane farms, uh, the Sugar Regulatory Administration and the Philippine government and other supporting institutions should work on applying these smart solutions for sugarcane cultivation to all of the uh, sugarcane plantations in the Philippines, most especially in the Western Visayas region where there is the most uh, concentration of sugarcane plantations. Lastly, for the recommended sugarcane production framework, uh, this is the marketing channels for the sugarcane production. Here, we added supporting institutions which can help sugarcane farmers, big millers, and small millers. More so, sugarcane farmers should try processing su their sugarcane harvests into other uses of sugarcane. In the paper, the other uses of sugarcane are elaborated such as uh, used for ethanol, uh, fertilizers, for fuel, and many more. With this, uh, the group thinks that the sugarcane industry will be boosted, since most of the problems, weaknesses, and threats come from external factors such as lack of funds, sugar import liberalization, and many more.